All right, so after today's uh, Station Labs, we are going to talk about the importance of tropism. So what is tropism? Have you ever heard this word before? What do you think it means? So right now in your Cornell notes, I want you to pause the video, and I just want you to come up with your own definition of tropism. So do that now. Well, the true definition of tropism is the movement of an organism in response to an external stimulus. So let's talk about all the different types of tropism. There's positive tropism. And positive tropism is uh, the growth or the attraction towards a stimulus. So when a plant or an animal moves towards a stimulus, that is positive tropism. Negative tropism is exactly the opposite. It is when a plant or animal grows opposite or away from a stimulus. So when I keep saying stimulus, what do I mean? A stimulus is any change in an organism's environment that causes the organism to react. An example for a stimulus in humans would be if you were to touch something hot. That hot object is a stimulus. Your um, cause or your change would be to jerk your hand away. And because you're moving it away from it, that would be an example of a negative tropism. Your body is reacting to that external stimulus. So it's a fancy way of saying the cause. So let's think about people. What causes people to react to changes in their environment? Other than the example I gave you, could you think of other things that we do to our environment. When thing, if you're standing in the sun and it's hot, you can go to the shade. If you're cold, you can move towards the sun. Those are examples of positive and negative tropism. So the response. How an organism reacts to a stimulus usually results in a change in the behavior. This is a fancy way of saying the effect. In English, you know that there's always an effect to your cause, cause and effect. When we're talking about this, it's going to be the stimulus and what the movement that the organism does in response to the stimulus. So how do plants respond? Well, there's seasonal responses. Plants living in regions that have cold winters can detect the change in seasons. Well, how can plants do this? And the answer is day and night. We know that the days get longer in the summer and shorter in the winter. So when plants are sensing a short day, they actually grow better when the night is longer than the day. Examples of these are strawberries and poinsettias. Long day plants are plants that grow better when the day is longer than the night. Example, lettuce and peas. Some trees keep their year their leaves all year long, and these are called evergreens, and some, like where we live, shed their leaves at the same time, and these are the deciduous trees. So why do plants do this? Well, we know that plants need light and water for photosynthesis, and they have developed a response called tropism to help make sure that they can grow towards a source of light and water. So we're going to talk about the different types of tropism. The first one is geotropism, which is a plant's response to gravity. The way a plant grows or bends in response to the gravity. So what does gravity do? We know that everything on earth, if it goes up, it must come down because of gravity. Do all parts of the plant respond the same way? Now thinking about it. If you're having a little seedling and it's growing and it's going to have to be very strong and push all the way through the dirt so it can get towards the light, it's going to be growing up. That's growing against gravity. However, the roots are going to start growing down to try to find water in the water table that is going with gravity. Now here's an example of uh, something that we're doing this week in class showing that this plant has been knocked over on its side, and the plant has responded to that stimulus. It is bending. It is trying to still grow up against gravity, even though the plant uh, container has been knocked on its side. Now, if we could cut this in half, how do you think the roots would be? Do you think the roots would still be going straight towards the bottom of the container, or do you think they would bend and go down with gravity? 
Um, hydrotropism is the next type, and just like you can predict, hydro, which means water, this is going to be a plant's response to water. The way a plant grows or bends in response to water. We know all plants have to have water, and their roots are the best system to do this. So how important is water to plant growth? Well, the answer is it's very important. We know that they could not perform photosynthesis without water. So in this experiment, they planted a pea plant or seedling and did a cup of water uh, right next to it. As you can see from the side, the roots actually didn't grow down just because of gravity. They moved perpendicular going to the water source. So in this example, hydrotropism overtook geotropism. Water is more important to a plant than the effects of gravity. Thing, I don't even know how to say this word. <laughs> Tropism is the way a plant grows or bends in response to touch. You can see that what is happening at the plant in the picture on, in your notes. So what do you think is going to happen if you touch a plant like ferns? If you touch them, they close up. That is a response to a stimulus. Can anybody think of another example? Venus flytrap. We talked about this in adaptations. They've developed these tiny little hairs inside, which you can kind of see one right here and a couple down here, that when an animal triggers these, its response is to close up. And then the last one is phototropism. The way a plant grows when it bends in response to light because photo means light, like photosynthesis deals with light. So how do sunflowers get their name? Well, if you know, sunflowers will always bend and move and follow the sun as it moves across the sky during the day. Morning glories is another example. I have some morning glories go, uh, growing on my fence, and they only open up during the day, and then the flowers close at night. This is a response to the light. And uh, that is another uh, one of the labs that we are testing today, or this week. So those are the types of, uh, of all the tropism. If you need to pause the video or rewind, make sure that you know all the different types and you have the definitions written in your C-notes, and we'll discuss them tomorrow.